Hello, viewer and friend and partner. Today I'm standing in Capernaum, one of the main centers and place where Jesus did his ministry. Archaeologists makes us to understand that this was a main trading center. That means a lot of people were doing trade. Today in our world, today, to be able to minister the gospel effectively and to draw people from the kingdom of the world into God's kingdom, we need to preach the gospel in the marketplace where there's trading going on, where there's many people who are lost. I want to speak to you about some of the things that Jesus did in Capernaum. So you want to come with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. The Bible says, I read from 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. We see the leper coming to Jesus. I'm standing here in ancient ruins of a synagogue. When Jesus went to the synagogue, people came who were sick, who were oppressed by the devil in their body. You remember the woman who was bent over 18 years? When Jesus saw her, Jesus said, woman, thou art loose from your spirit of infirmity. You may be watching me and you're suffering from the spirit of infirmity. You've been attacked in your physical body, in your mind, in your family. I bind that spirit of infirmity. I command that leprosy, that sin, that sickness, whatever torment it is, I command it to leave you right now. Receive the healing power of Jesus right from the land of Israel, from Capernaum, from the synagogue. I speak the healing power to you. Receive in Jesus' name. Let us continue. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. You see, Jesus was always willing. Friend, viewer, Jesus is willing. Whatever your need is, Jesus is willing. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak thy word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another camp, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them, Therefore, verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Viewer, as I'm speaking to you, the self same hour, the self same second. All the centurion needed to do was to believe the word of Jesus. He could see that the word of God carried the power to heal his servant who was at home. Jesus did not need to physically come. The word is spirit and is life. I stand here in the synagogue in Capernaum and I speak the healing power of God to enter your room right now. Whatever is sick, it may be your mind that is sick. I bind the spirit of infirmity. I command it to leave you. The spirit of insanity, go. I break and destroy the hold of the enemy over your mind in Jesus name. Receive the peace of God right now. Whatever has crippled your body that you are not able to move, I command that pain to leave right now in Jesus name. All you need to do, friend, is to believe. The centurion believed the word of God. And the Bible says the self same hour, the same hour Jesus spoke the word, go and your servant will be healed. The servant received the healing at home. Wherever you are, receive your healing. Rise up from that bed of affliction. Rise up in Jesus' name. Let us carry on. Because just around this area, right in front of me, I can see what we call St. Peter's mother-in-law's house. And the Bible continues to tell us from verse 14. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother's laid and sick of a fever. 
and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto him. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses child of God there is so much evidence in this land of Israel where I'm standing as there is evidence right there in St. Peter's mother-in-law's house I believe the anointing of God is here and it's coming to you whatever fever whatever represents fever sickness disorder in your body I rebuke that cancer, I rebuke that stroke, I rebuke that diabetes. I come against every disorder in your body and I command that spirit of infirmity, that strong man of infirmity, be bound and loose that child of God right now in Jesus' name. Just as Peter's mother-in-law rose up from that bed of affliction, that bed of sickness and received her strength, receive your strength, receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Let us carry on. I'll go back to verse 18. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandments to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee, whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not word to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Friend, Jesus was not saying that it's not important to take care of your family, your mother, your father, or to bury them. But Jesus was making a very important fact here. That he comes first. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. He wants to take the first place in our heart. And do you remember the scripture that says in Luke chapter 10 when Mary and Martha came to entertain Jesus. Mary took the rightful place because the Bible says that she sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to Jesus' word. She prioritized hearing of the word of Jesus before anything. Martha was very busy. Here we see the Bible saying that Jesus told his followers who wanted to follow him, you need to follow me first because when you sit at Jesus' feet and hear his words and follow his direction, everything else will come together. So child of God, you may be a believer and you look warm. Today you're in Christ, tomorrow you're in the world. Today when challenges come, you're falling out of the faith. But I want to encourage you, as I stand here in Capernaum, I release the power of God and the anointing that is able to stir up your faith to follow Jesus Christ. Receive it right now that you begin to prioritize Jesus. Because the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, that when you prioritize seeking Jesus Christ, his government, his way of life, his influence and his power, the Bible says all other things will come and follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus we want to move on to verse 23. The Bible says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, in so much that a ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? when he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. Whichever part of the world where you're watching now, there may be natural disasters, there may be a storm in your family, a storm in your business. Whatever the storm is, the authority and the power in the kingdom of God, which Jesus was preaching right here in Capernaum, is coming to you. When you come under the kingdom of our God, your words become very powerful. Even the elements of nature begins to obey you. So I speak to every storm in your body, every storm in your family, every storm in your business, every storm in your body. Seize in the mighty name of Jesus. Be made still. Receive the peace of God in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. 
Hallelujah. I want to finish off with the story of the madman of the Gadarenes. Let's go to verse 28. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Are thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them and head of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the head of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the head of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perish in the waters and they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils and behold the whole city came out to meet jesus and when they saw him they besought him that he would depart out of their coast glory to jesus whatever oppression Whatever torment of the enemy, the Bible says that when the madman, the enemy, the devils had oppressed him so much and possessed his body that he was living in an unnatural way, living in the tombs, cutting himself and crying. Today, your situation and your very lifestyle may be as if you are like the madman of gatherings because you've lost your mind. Depression has bound your mind. Insanity has brought turmoil into your life and your home. I rebuke that devil. I command Satan and all his powers to lose hold on you for Jesus has need of you. Be free in Jesus' name. I release that he delivers power of God upon your life. Receive your peace of mind in Jesus' name. God bless you. We bless this land of Israel as Jesus moved through the town of Capernaum and the manifestation of God's power, healing, deliverance, and miracles follow him. May the same power and anointing come upon you. As a minister of God, as you go about preaching and doing the works of Jesus, may Jesus confirm his word with signs and wonders. God bless you.